So today I'm going to be doing the, uh, the old crank sensor, crank position sensor on my 2004 Cavalier 2.2 Acotec. Uh, just a simple replacement, not that big of a deal. Got to take the starter off to get to it. See if that or the intake manifold. I prefer the starter, a little simpler, especially in my car. My car is a little different because it's boosted. So there's some turbo stuff in the way. So we'll be doing the starter method. So. Here's the new crank sensor, and uh, let's get started. All right, here is my 2004 Chevrolet Cavalier. Yes, it probably looks different than yours. Mine has a Han Racecraft Stage 2 turbo kit, so there's some extra things on here and some regular things missing, like the regular airbox. And yes, I have a few extra things hooked up. I'm doing some diagnostics, but that's not for this video. This is for the crank position sensor, which is basically located under the intake manifold right there. But we're going to go from underneath and take the starter off. It's going to be so much easier. So first thing is going to be to get the car in the air, throw it safely on some jack stands, and get started. Now, excuse the uh, car noises of, you know, being right next to the damn street. But, uh... I'm just going to give you guys a little tip for those who haven't worked on these or want an easier jacking point. Let's go underneath the front bumper here. That's what I use. And, you know, I've been working on J-bodies for, oh, almost 13 years now. And what I like to use <coughs> is, uh, you'll see, uh, you got this front lip made out of rubber. Go behind the front lip. There's a piece of metal right here. And this is part of the subframe that holds your engine in place as well as all your front suspension and steering and everything else. Uh, it's very strong, it's made out of steel, and this is what I use to jack the car up and I always have from the front end just because it's so much easier. You just use the center for your jack and you go over to the sides, put a nice jack stand on each side, it holds it up nice and stable, it doesn't bend. Just make sure you use the steel beam, make sure you don't hit anything else. That's what I use and it's the safest thing and also the easiest and the fastest. Okay, the car is safely up on jack stands in those spots where I showed you to use on the subframe. And as the next step was to undo my negative terminals, as you can see. The negative terminal is undone. Next step is going to be to take off the starter. Let's get to that. Alright, underneath the car here, don't mind the black pipe that's part of the turbo setup. Your car will not have this unless you just happen to have a Han kit. Uh, so this won't be in the way. Now up underneath there, here's the subframe which I was speaking about to jack the car by. Now anyways, in reference, uh, here is the starter between your radiator and your oil pan on the front end of the car. And this is a 15 millimeter bolt. And there's also one on top. There's also a, a few electrical connections here that you're going to want to get loose. Um, but really we just need to worry about these 15 millimeter bolts. There's one here and there's one on top that you really can't see but you can get to it with an extension. So that's what we're going to do first to get this starter off. Okay, as you can see I got the bottom bolt out. Now you can see where my extension is right there and that is where the top bolt is located. And you know I really can't get a good shot of the actual top bolt because you really can't see it but you can see where the extension goes and that's where the second bolt is. There's only two bolts holding the starter on, on this engine. So get that one out and you're good to go. Okay, we have the starter off of the engine. You can see by the giant hole in the transmission right there where it goes. <laughs> Here is the plug from the crank position sensor. Just a flathead and it comes right off. And let's see if we can get a good look at it. Let's type under here. Move this plug out of the way. There we go. Right. You can see there is the previously replaced oil pressure switch, which we did on a previous video. And to the left of that, that is your knock sensor, which we are not doing today, but that's your knock sensor. And then you can see the plug and a 10 millimeter bolt to remove the crank position sensor. And that's all there is to it. So let's get to it and get it done. As you can see, I, I put some shop towel here inside the hole in the transmission for the starter. Now this is so that you don't accidentally drop excuse the noise, you don't accidentally drop any bolts or tools in your transmission you know and then have to take your transmission out because you dropped a freaking bolt in there. So it's a good idea to do and then you just pop it out when you're done. Now as you can see I got the sensor out 
you can see the hole right there from it. Uh, it's normal if a little bit of oil comes out of it. That's no big deal. It's you know goes into the engine block and all. Uh, but that's it. We're going to go ahead and compare the new and old one and see how it looks. Okay, here is our new sensor on the left and our old one on the right. I did get a Duralast. It's what was in stock in town. It's not my favorite choice. I prefer to always use original equipment like AC Delco or Denso. But it's what they had. So, the main concern when getting an aftermarket part is uh, fitment, of course. Well, obviously, they look the same. Uh, connectors is what I really look at. Here's the stock one. And here is the new one, which is identical on the connectors. Uh, aftermarket parts sometimes will look a little different. It's more of a fitment and function thing. But that is the old compared to the new. Let's throw it in there. Installation is pretty simple. It's, of course, you know, reverse of what you did to take it out. But there it is in there. The bolt is semi started just to get it in. It simply pushes in, line it line the one bolt hole up, it's ten millimeter, tighten that up till it's snug, take your rag out, go ahead and put your starter back in, those two bolts, two fifteen millimeter bolts, and then go ahead and don't forget to connect your connector before you put the starter in, of course, let me not forget to tell you that. Then you put your starter on. Then we'll let the car down, we will reconnect the battery, and that is about it. I'm all done. It basically took like an hour, maybe, at best. And, and you know what? That's with me just getting out of a back procedure two days ago, and I'm working outside the garage in the sun in a driveway with hand tools. So if I can do that in about an hour with recording after a back procedure, then basically anyone can do this. It's not that bad, as you can see in the video. Um, all I have left to do is connect the battery. If you have a factory battery setup, it's just an 8mm wrench or socket, whichever you want to use, to reconnect the ground and or positive. On mine, it's different because I have an aftermarket setup. So, hope you enjoyed the video and it helps someone out. Uh, it's not too bad to do and it is something that goes bad on these. So... If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe if you have any questions. You can put it down in the comment section or just say what's up. And until uh, next time.